As gas supplies from Russia to Europe have slumped amid European Union sanctions, many European countries, including Germany, Italy, Austria, the Netherlands, and Denmark, have recently announced the reopening of coal power plants or taken measures to support coal power. These measures have raised concerns that the EU might scale back its climate ambitions and hinder the bloc's goal of reaching carbon neutrality by 2050. There is some talk of uh, firing up coal-fired power stations、um, that had been mothballed, so that would allow the, some countries to use less gas.、Um, obviously, not very good for emissions, and the EU has some pretty serious emissions reduction targets it also needs to meet. If you're turning back on coal to make electricity, what that will do to emissions, and clearly, high emissions are bad for climate change. The EU's return to coal power is in sharp contrast to its carbon reduction requirements for other countries. Concerns have also been raised that while the EU is seeking new sources of fossil fuels elsewhere, it might jeopardize the efforts of other regions, including Africa, to reduce carbon emissions. In 2009, developed countries pledged 100 billion U.S. dollars a year to help developing countries, especially African countries, to cope with climate change by 2020. However, they still have not lived up to their promises. Everybody would find very inconsistent and actually disappointing is that since the, last, the COP of 2009 in Copenhagen,、uh, the West and the EU and the G7 have promised to invest 100 billion dollars、uh, on, on climate finance.、Uh, even at the last COP 26 in Glasgow,、uh, the money hasn't shown up.、Uh, we are now heading to COP 27. In Shamal Sheikh, and nobody knows whether those commitments are going to be on it. So, what we'd expect is can Europe now start a serious conversation on a global decarbonisation finance plan and a cooperation that leads to decarbonisation? While urging the developed countries to honour their commitments, experts also called for increasing investment and cooperation to help strengthen capacity in the emerging countries to tackle climate change. In emerging and developing countries. One of the clearest things to do now is to invest, particularly in African countries where there is a lot of sunlight in solar, because it is just cheaper than investing in other forms of electricity. We need to partner. We need to encourage, I mean, technology owners to set up, start thinking of processing our bauxite, start thinking of processing our silica sands, processing our lithium. But we need to get. Into that conversation to ensure that we are not just selling the raw material, but we are processing it, if not to a whole battery, but semi-processed, you know, to make、uh, more gains、uh, in the end of it. People are still researching into various forms of energy to be able to hold the market for themselves, right? So we also need to now begin to see how do we participate in the economics of the energy transition to make sure that、um, we can also be. Participants in the marketplace. It requires governments having the capacity to really think through how you manage that process of phasing out fossil fuels and phasing in clean alternatives. The energy crisis right now is quite complicated、uh, because、uh, it reflects in part the war in Ukraine,、uh, but the longer-term energy crisis, not the short term. Is the crisis of dependency on fossil fuels, which is creating the human-induced climate change, and that is endangering all of us right now.